It's extremely breezy today. But that's why I want to have time to do this video. And I wanted to do them because I sold my company, um, one of my charter fishing businesses, a long time ago. And when I did that, um, I lost all the videos since then. I sold the guy all the rights to all the videos. So I wanted to start doing them again and, uh, so I can help some people out. Giving back is the biggest thing you can do in fishing. I'm well known for doing that, and I will continue to do that. Let's get my dogs in here and we'll be good to go. Come on, girls and boys. And then we'll get on to uh, getting this stuff rigged up. Talking about equipment, and I'll tell you why. And I know everyone can't afford, you know, equipment that costs you know, two or three hundred dollars a rod and reel, or even a hundred dollars for a rod and reel. And you can't go to Walmart or, or yard sale and get, you know, a twenty dollar rod and reel. But it is so crucial to have the right equipment. Uh, I, I just can't stress it enough. And again, I'm often criticized for for saying that. But it's not that you need to spend a thousand on one on a rod and reel. But from my experience of 30 years of guiding, doing inshore and offshore fishing, if you don't put a little bit of money into getting some decent tackle rod and reels, um, it's, it's going to come back to bite you. You'll either lose a fish, break a rod, which can happen to anybody on you know, no matter what the rod costs. But it'll happen more often than not with cheap stuff. And you need a reel with a smooth drag, or you'll lose a lot, a lot of fish. Let me show you how to tie this snail right quick. I'm gonna cut a little, just cut a little piece off just to show you. Let's say this is your trout leader, or you can use this for offshore, you know, bottom fishing. You can use it for a lot of different things. This uh, this particular knot, because it kind of holds the hook. So let's tie it on. Uh, Let's just tie it on a, see what we got. Here we go. Here's a, here's a six salt tarpon hook that we, that we use, the Damakatsu. Okay, the thing about this knot, it's so easy, but you have to have both ends of your leader. In other words, your leader cannot be tied off to a swivel on one end. You need the whole, you need one whole piece end to end. You need two tags. So, check it out. All you do is take the hook eye. You run the leader through it. Like so. Okay? Press down on it. Just press it against the shank of the hook like that. Then you're just going to wrap it underneath the eye. There's one, two, three. Just keep them tight. Four and four is enough on big leader. We'll do five on a on the smaller leader. So you've got that wrapped around five times. Okay, just hold that with your finger. Get the end of your leader on the other end that you had sticking out or that you had available. And then all you're going to do is run that back through the eye of the hook. And then when you pull this tight, I'll show it to you again in a minute. If you got messed up on it um, and I'm holding this I'm holding this pile of loops onto the shank with my finger this is done you won't believe how good that looks and the harder you pull the better that knot gets the tighter it gets but you can see what's going on there so this piece of tag we'll trim that off and I'll show you what it looks like after you do that you can trim it off tight too. And now look what you got. Now you've got a mini snail. The hook's gonna hang just like that, perfectly. That mini snail will not come loose. There's no need in going through a complete snail knot process, which is a process. Um, and you can that's how we tie on a trout hook. Uh, in a pinch, we'll just tie a fisherman's knot. But, you know, if the leader's already tied to the swivel or the cork or the weight, whatever it may be, weight with swivel, we won't. You can't do this because again, you need both ends of the leader. Um, so if you're in a bind, you just tie. You know, you just tie a fisherman's knot in it. You just six swings and back through the loop and tie it. But if you have the time to tie a snail, this is the best knot that you could tie that I know about. And nothing's bound up here. This is done by wrapping in a reverse pull against the wrap. That's what's making this come tight and not come out. So there's no knot on your line, which is what breaks leaders and lines. That's how you lose fish. This is absolutely 
the best knot in my opinion so go ahead blast away in the comments but it works great and I can prove that it works great too okay so we're going to do away with this and we're going to go straight to rigging this popping cork back to this Cajun Thunder we talked about earlier this has been caught a few trout you can see where trout have actually hit the cork we tie, we've got 30 pound braid on our main line here tied straight to the Cajun Thunder it's factory brass bronze whatever these leads are made out of okay and then at the bottom of that comes with the swivel on it obviously and we've got around eight inches of 25 pound mono not fluoro mono mono right here and an eight ounce egg weight that just slides between the bottom of the Cajun Thunder float and a swivel the swivel tied on the end of this little leader we got see what we got here that makes this cork extremely effective at casting and the reverse pop in other words when it pops back up after you popped it when it lays down flat this extra weight comes down fast and hard and it gives you it gives, you, it, gives it such a quick return to vertical and uh, and more noise it just makes it very very swift and when you fish this again like I mentioned earlier you'll find out what swift means when you add this weight to it in this way if you just a lot of people will pinch off a, a big split shot right here no way man leaders gonna catch it and you're gonna break a fish off this is the absolute best way to do it right here it will not foul it will not piggyback unless you get throw into the wind straight up in the air this is the best way we found to to do this and have it not piggyback especially with longer leaders you know how it likes to piggyback and it'll go over the court and all your all your stuff's tangled up out there with, with a bait on it or a jig a doa whatever or your shrimp is wrapped all up and it's a mess okay so there it is all right now we're going to tie about three feet of 15 pound mono on this can use fluoro here if you want but for purpose of tutorial and and the reason i'm rigging this particular rod I'm going to use mono. I want something light. I want something that shrimp can tote around. So we're rigging this for a live bait. We want, so you can fish a mud minnow on this. Anything you want. Any live bait you want. And the lightness of that leader, the light weight of it, allows that bait to be able to tote it. Especially with a small number one, not one on, a number one kill hook. That bait is happy he can tote it around he can swim pretty much like normal and he'll crawl over you know, he'll crawl over rocks grass mud lumps flat sand uh, anything and look pretty much normal besides there's a hook sticking out excuse me out of his head but other than that you know it's pretty good see i want that shrimp um in our case shrimp this time and some of these shrimp are small especially when we get the florida brown shrimp you guys know all about that we want, you know, we want those, those shrimp are small, they're hardy, um, but they don't have a lot of toting capacity compared to big white shrimp like, that Georgia has. So we want that light line, that 15, for that reason. So so we want to hinder the bait. We already stuck a hook through his head, right? So we want to hinder him as, uh, as least possible after the effect of being hooked through his skull. So this helps in that. The lighter the leader, you know, the lighter everything is, the better. Um, below that cage of thunder. After the weight, it needs to be light. Because that's where, that's the business end of this. The weight's for distance and popping. And But the bottom end of this leader, again, you need about three feet. This is definitely the business end of the leader. Okay, and I'll show you that. You're not going to be able to see this real good. But here's what we're going with. This regular store-bought kale hooks. This is a number one, not a one-off. That's personal preference also, but the number one, man, you can turn it around better. You may miss a fish or two more than you would sometimes because the hook's smaller, but I can tell you what, you'll get a lot more hookups because the hook's small and light and, and, the, and the fish can tote it. So here goes our snail. Probably not going to be able to see this. It's so small, though. 
and I'm going to do five or six on this ladder line. The loops we talked about, and that's done. And I'm going to run my leader back through the eye like we talked about on the other with the bigger leader. Same deal. Just got a longer leader here, so I'm, I'm easing it through. And it's hard to see it, but there it is. It's ready to go. I'm just going to clip the tag off. All right. Now that's ready to be tied on with whatever knot you want. You don't need a fancy knot for this either. Tie it on to the end of this leader that we've made onto our Cajun Thunder with the slip weight. So we're just I'm just gonna tie just tie a regular single fisherman's knot. I'm not even gonna reinforce it, doesn't need it. Everybody thinks it does, it does not. All it does is make the leader break. Especially on light line. I'm gonna go in there, I went six times. I'll spin it one more there. Back through the loop. Pull it down with your nail and tighten that baby up. It's hard to show you what that is because it's the line so small. This is what it is, guys. But that's there. We'll clip off the tag here. It's ready to fish. And that's how we rig a Georgia style popping float. This the most important part is this. That's the most important part of it. Now I know it took 15 minutes to explain this, but I wanted you to really understand when you fish this, and I don't have a way to demonstrate it right now. I'd be out in the boat if it wasn't blowing 30, uh, 35 knots out of the northeast, and I'd show you what it does, and I probably will in another video if I'm starting to do these videos again. But you'll see the effect of this. So buy you a 50 bag or a 25 bag of 1 8 and 1 quarter ounce for this, and you experiment with, this, with the weight you want on it. And watch how it sinks to float, watch how good it pops, and watch how far you can throw it. Let me know how you do. And I appreciate you watching.